There's the line of data and the 7B60 and we're at line 22 and at the end number is 7B60. Vice drones and RF power delivery 5G well city. There's the alien radio signal and there's the data. Um, this is about Clystrons and RF power delivery, PDF files, invention, research keywords from the WOW data. May 18, 2013 was the day I was be, uh, working on this. Today is June the 24th. So the keywords that I was data, um, Googling was Sephrotrix splitting, and it came from line 22, um, 7B59, Sephrotrix accelerating extractors part 2, 5G WOW study. Quote from blog. Um, Clystrons and RF power delivery. So this is a collector for spent beam. Flower petal mode converter from TE10 rectangular waveguide to TE01 circular waveguide. Collector ion pump. Then it's got an RF output coupler. Then a gun ion pump and RF input coupler. Interactions, cavities, and focusing structures. Electron gun, cathode and heater, high voltage ceramic insulator, and a node. So this is a schematic drawing of an NLC. X5011 periodic permanent magnet PPM focusing clustern. The drip tube consists of a number of small RF cavities. The ion pumps are required to prevent the electron beam scattering off gas inside the clustern. Given the enormous gradients that have to be sustained within the NLC accelerating structures, a correspondingly large amount of power is required to sustain these large E fields. As such, the delivery of RF power to the structure is a crucial part of the NLC main line act. In order to produce the 50 MW peak powers required by the RF system, a high power RF source called a klystron is used. The schematic diagram of that is shown. A klystron is also an accelerator in the miniature. Electron gun at the bottom of the klystron creates a burst of electrons. This electron pulse then passes through a resonant bunching cavity. Into this cavity is injected a steady RF flow, CW or continuous wave, as the desired accelerating frequency. Since the cavity is also resonant at this frequency, the electron beam becomes strongly bunched at this frequency as it travels out of the cavity. The bunched beam then passes through a second output cavity that is also resonant at the accelerating frequency. This resonance causes the bunched electron beam to be very strongly excite the cavity at the accelerating frequency. The RF produced within the cavity as a result is then coupled out through a waveguide which carries the amplified RF power out to the structure C above. The electron beam is then dumped into a beam stop at the top of the klystron. In practice a number of input and output cavities may be used to maximize both the electron bunching and the amount of RF power that can be extracted from a single klystron. This use of resonant cavities creates a large amplification of the RF signal input to the bunching cavity. Gains of 10 to the power of 6 are possible with the modern pulsed power of klystrons. Two power sources are required to provide the input power to the klystron. The RF input to the bunching cavity is produced by a low level RF system. This produce provides the RF input signal that is amplified by the klystron and is usually a CW microwave source such as a traveling wave tube. The input power to the klystron is provided through the electron gun by a modulator. A modulator is used to produce the pulses that drive the electron gun in the klystron and produce the highly high intensity electron beam. It is through the modulator pulse that the klystron receives the power that amplifies the low level RF input into a high power output to drive the structures. The modulator pulse is a DC square pulse that lasts for a few microseconds. Pulsing the modulator allows for a higher peak output and therefore a larger power delivery to the accelerating structures. The klystron and the NLC are assembled into groups of eight, referred to as an eight-pack, with each powered by a single 500 kW modulator. These make a single RF distribution unit, of which there are nine in each Linux sector. Each klystron eight-pack supplies eight groups of six structures, with power delivered to each group of structures via a pulse compression system called the delay line re distribution system. DLD allows the combination of the 3.2 MSRF pulses produced by each klystron into eight consecutive 396 NS pulses, which are then delivered to the groups of six structures. As such, as up to 600 MW of peak power can be delivered to the accelerating structures. And that's from the link um, www-pmp.physics.ox.ac.uk. Okay, and there's the rest of the line there.
And again, uh, separate tick splitting will be in the next video. Thanks for watching.